so we've talked about Eugenia Cooney several times on this podcast, usually in relation to uh, how people respond to her to her material. Now, there has been a recent rash of 911 calls that have been placed to the police department near her house because her fans are very, very worried about her appearance. I am going to show you guys uh, an image, so it is it's not graphic. I mean, it's shocking, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, just be warned. Um, so this is a scary thing to think about in, in a day and age now where this is the discussion we have every time. Like, what is freedom in a case like this, right? Is is a person like this, uh, is it their right to to do this to themselves without somebody stepping in? And this question gets brought up a lot because it came up when we talked about Free Britney. Right. Like, does a person have a right to do this to themselves without somebody stepping in? Yeah. So I think what this one is kind of twofold. Um, theoretically, you know, people who have severe eating disorders can get committed and have to go. And this has happened to her before. Um, the other thing is, like, I don't know, you know, her body is probably so severely damaged that you're probably not going to see the kind of like she can't just go away for two weeks and like eat a no. bunch of cake and it'll be fine uh i will say this idea like oh crazy they're so concerned they're calling 911 this is exactly what happened with ruby frankie that mommy vlogger yeah. out of utah like who is in jail right now because people Eight were concerned counts. about her um her children and because mm. one of her children they had they had they had a history of um like pe cps people calling because they were vloggers and this happens to other family vloggers as far as i know probably illegitimate but people decide they think you're something wrong with ruby's kid she was known for like these severe and weird forms of punishment like one kid had to sleep on a bean bag instead of his bed for nine months or something because he did something she didn't like or like her kids she would like send them to school without lunches as a punishment and um her ruby frankie had a kid who like went and knocked on a neighbor's window and had like lacerations on their arms and was like i'm really thirsty i'm really hungry can you help me and like it's been a big deal right so her and her business partner are both in jail right now right good and yeah. it's it's crazy and i think it's not a question of like you know what what i don't know what her name is eugenia, eugenia cooney is allowed to do whatever she wants but that doesn't mean everyone gets to just be like she's just expressing herself right exactly. like mm -hmm. there are reasons that we have commitment law or like mental health commitment laws and like ways people can intervene and people um, are looking to make sure that her she's not being forced to and, make content you know the thing is people are checking in on her and therefore she's getting more views and therefore she's making more money off of this so engaging with her at all is actually probably encouraging her to continue and i hate to put it that bluntly but like you the if you really cared about this person you should stop watching her content you yeah. think you're watching for her welfare and maybe you are and i i, I appreciate the empathy there but like watching these videos funds the behavior if there's a financial reward to what she's doing to herself and so if you actually thought this was not worth watching you just have to stop watching the view count has to crash the sergeant who commented on this uh who said that he's known her for more than a decade that's not uncommon for like big enough you know e-celebrities like especially like well, uh, and like where's she based like um oh i, I don't know what's i don't i, don't know I mean the thing lives, is he might know her for decades because she lives in a small town and everyone yeah. knows her but uh, but also like, like certain look. youtuber like if you if you're if you're like a live streamer and, and like you've been swatted a lot of them they develop relationships with their local law enforcement to like prevent something bad from happening mm. if something is but is that because of this or is this because of welfare check calls that have come to the home before in the past which is another very reasonable thing to see if somebody sees somebody who looks like this you would wonder if they were being mistreated at home i mean she wasn't always an adult right so uh and he says that he um they even she has like a, he has like a special code with the sergeant if something's not right she puts a specific thing in the video to say that it's not right so then he'll know which makes it seem like the sergeant would then watch the content on a regular basis to check on her I, sorry i'm not following this so she says uh says uh that he has a good relationship with Miss Cooney and says they even have a special code. She puts a certain object in her videos so he knows that everything is all right. So there's something that shows up in her videos that she doesn't say what it is that indicates that everything's okay and nothing is wrong. That sounds more like domestic violence to me. That's yep. that's the weirder thing. Because uh, also, like, of course, the person who's starving themselves is yeah. like, no, don't worry, everything's fine. It's not like she's going to be like, no, it turns out I'm really hungry. If uh, the object that sounds more like, are you being forced? Are you, is, exactly. there, is there a partner? I mean, Jeez. well, that's what, yeah, I mean, that's what they're talking about. She was like, are, are you being forced to make the content? But the, the scary thing is, is like, once you get to that size, it's like we talked about with Nick Avocado or any of these YouTubers who end up making content that can be 
you know, detrimental to your health. Like you, it's like audience capture, right? You then you kind of get but addicted to making that content. My thing, it's change. not just like making the content; it's being deprived of food, right? Yeah. Like it's not. If she were a normal weight, people might still watch her content. There's no reason to think that she couldn't be yeah. successful at what she's doing. But right this, now, she's do? got a specific click factor because people are so kind of creep weirded out by the way she looks. The sergeant said that she's always been skinny, adding that uh, that they can't really make her eat. Uh, eat more if her, at her size if, it, if that makes her comfortable he says that she's of sound mind and always has a bubbly personality when he chats with her well it's I guess uh, is that like the medical opinion she's been 5150 before mm -hmm. uh, and, and said that when that happened she felt betrayed and you know, and basically put upon by, by her family and friends which is very common of somebody who is like for many people like in my case like not necessarily for me specifically but plenty of people who are who go through addiction right if they're not ready to get help when your family and friends come to you with legitimate concern and they're worried about you if you're not ready to get help you don't feel grateful for what's being mm -hmm. for what they're yeah, doing you feel sure. like they're ganging up on you mm -hmm. And that's the scary thing, right? Is uh, I, I feel as if that this young woman is going to be How walked into her grave. She's in her early twenties, um, I believe. So uh, it's just it's scary because you see the way that uh, social media clout can get influence a person to not change. And I don't know if uh, like I don't know who's supposed to get involved if you're an adult, right? Like it's not like this isn't a case of where somebody is parents are keeping that like we were talking about earlier with Ruby Frank. This isn't the case of somebody's parents keeping them uh, from eating or parents punishing them for, or or making. Well, that's why them the object content. thing is so weird to me. Like that would make it seem like perhaps she's like got an abusive boyfriend who's like, oh, you're making all this money because you look so crazy. So I'm going to keep food away from you. And so she puts up the objects. So the sergeant knows that's not what's happening. Yeah. But, you know, again, if it all comes down to whatever she's doing to make her content appealing is potentially you think as a viewer driving her behavior that's self-destructive, you should stop watching her content. Yeah. You should unfollow her. You should unsubscribe. And, you know, it's not to cancel her. It's to not engage with something that like to, to, it's not She's to 29 direct, to direct. 29. Yeah. I was gonna say, I thought she was closer okay. to 30. Yeah. Um, it's not to direct any revenue towards something that you think is harming someone. It's the same reason that people boycott family channels. Like the yeah. family vloggers incorporate their kids. But if you thought that was wrong, that their kids are being exploited in any way, you should stop consuming their content. This I feel like, the, Oh, go ahead. With, with the whole, I'll have an item in my video. At the bare minimum, what it means is that at the past, something has happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's kind of the same. I guess it's the same thing. The argument they make when they say, like, oh, look, if you don't want women to make OnlyFans content, then stop consuming the content and the market for it dries up. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if, if there's nobody buying the content, then like, oh, look, it's, it's good to hold everyone. You can you can have complaints about the women doing it, uh, but you can put yourself first. You know, you can put your own behavior for something like right. that. Right. And, and if you're a viewer and you're like, well, I'm just checking to see if she's OK, like it doesn't YouTube pays her regardless if you're hate watching her, you love watch her, you're concerned watching her. Like it doesn't matter that that engagement is still there no matter what your motivation is. And so if you think that potentially she's harming herself to make her body look, you know, more dramatic for potentially converting you know people seeing her thumbnails into views then you should stop being a viewer yeah mm. it's uh it's scary like what do you how do you feel about it for like like people in the chat were saying like then maybe we shouldn't cover her do you feel like that's a fair criticism i go back and forth on it i mean yeah. you know it's happening no matter what so as like a news side not yeah. that you're exactly news but like as a commentary th <laughs> content you know that's okay I, I take insult when people call us journalists uh you know well, you I, should, I just yeah. meant like it's not like you're like and i'm live reporting from outside eugenia's house like you know what i mean like it's not like this is like you're r calling her neighbors to get comments and stuff like that but in some ways maybe you shouldn't comment on her because ultimately then people are exposed to her and then potentially go watch her stuff to be like who is this girl and that's driving more viewership to her on the other hand it is something that's happening and in some ways it's worth discussing because we get to talk about the conversations over like as a viewer what kind of engagement do you give they content that, that same, could be potentially harmful they say that same thing to us when we cover disney when we cover any of these topics they're like look if you don't like their content then don't cover it i'm like look i take a neutral approach as often as possible to any of this stuff he's gonna like talk if, about the usa network like for two hours if every you day. played her <laughs> that. we could do that a usa network podcast would be great i uh, could do that but if you played her video on this show i would be opposed to it because it's like she is getting that view count like there's no yeah. reason to do that and it's the same thing like 
yeah, there's a morbid fascination with what's going on. But remember that if you engage with any of her content and you think, and I'm not saying this is how it works, but you think that we are potentially driving whatever decision she's making because ultimately her objective is to get the clicks and views, which is true of all anyone who has a, you know, social media based platform, then you are contributing even if you think you're doing it out of concern. There's a $20 super chat here from Beanbag Actual with no message, which is very kind of you. I'm going to heart that one. I real I forgot you can heart super chats now. You're so engaging. Look, I this this is one that goes back and forth on it, right? Cuz a lot of people do say that like like if you cover these topics about these celebrities that you don't like, you're giving them attention. I'm like, "Look, I don't love or hate any of these people. I just I, and I just I, talk about it. I want to stress that I am talking more specifically about the way engagement works online. Like, true, you're giving celebrity attention by talking about it on this podcast. On the other hand, if I tell you, oh, hey, there's this YouTube girl and she's doing weird stuff, you might then look her up and watch her videos. And that is a more intense conversion into engagement. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, me just saying someone's name that everyone knows doesn't necessarily drive people to the platform. Whereas, like, if you're covering something that then you know people are going to try and engage with her stuff it's a little bit different. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, I have no answer on it. I'm just saying if you are someone yeah. who is like telling yourself, oh, I'm watching her stuff out of concern, maybe if you really are concerned, stop watching it. I don't hold like anything that I do in this like high regard that I'm, ch I, 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 I kind of laugh at the idea of like changing the world or like the people who talk about fighting a culture war, right? I, I guess I get it. But at the end of the day, I just want to talk about stuff that I find interesting and whatever people take, take from that is what they take from that because I can't control what that is. <laughs> Ah! Ah! Dane! See, I do like parties. Crisis parties. I don't think this counts, my friend. Oh, it counts. See, maybe that's what it is. He only likes parties that he forces into at a definite Exactly. Volume. Exactly. Interesting. Like, uh, like I, I don't take, like, a strong stance on a lot of this stuff because it's, it's part of the job to talk about it, but... Uh, the idea that I'm not going to cover something because somebody says that it contributes to it. Uh, also, in, the, in this realm, at least when it comes to movies and stuff like that, you can... Careful. In this in this realm, like when it comes to movies, you can you can influence Disney's box office by having um, a fair negative review about a movie way more than just not talking about it. Mm. For us, most of the time. So, all I, right, I, let's I, go to. Oh, I have no idea how to have even begin to have an opinion about this. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah, it's, I, that that's truly the the only thing that came to mind during the whole segment is that I, f this, I feel this feels sort of equivalent to like the 600 pound life people yeah because it's like at some point you were 300 pounds and then 400 pounds and then 500 pounds and then 600 it's like when do you like when does I don't know and like, pre-internet TLC would have made a, yeah, a video about this girl being society. like the world's skinniest whatever like like what, it, it would have been something that like you treated sort of like a modern day sideshow well so she's like 70 pounds or something right so it's like when when she was like 90 80 like when I mean my thing is like when when do people start noticing and when is it like okay well this isn't average you know what I'm like not that you have to be but it's like what's what's going on like what what because it's it's one thing being obese and then it's one thing being like this is like record setting it's society's always going to be fascinated by those that kind of exist on the outskirts of what's mm -hmm. acceptable in society mm -hmm. the only difference would have been i suppose that back then tlc would have made all the money off of my 600 pound life and, and people get mad about that yeah. people will say it's exploitative i mean it's similar and they criticisms both are, and, and similar i guess they both are similar criticisms of uh netflix's uh love on the spectrum and down for love Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.